Have you been told that panicking in Rust is bad? What if I told you that sometimes panicking is exactly what you need? In this video, I'll show you how embracing panics can make your code more resilient, predictable, and easier to maintain. Forget everything you have heard. Today, we will analyze why Rust panic mechanism is one of its hidden strengths. I'm going to walk you through a very practical example, and this is something I sadly see very often in, in production. So say you have an Axum server, so an HTTP server, and all it does is you know, you send post requests and it writes some stuff through the database. So you go ahead and deploy that using your Kubernetes cluster. Maybe you use Helm or something. So you do Helm update or whatever it is. And it seems to go, the update seems to go through. Your pods are healthy. Everything looks great. But the problem is that when you start using the API, you realize that it's just not working. And then you start looking at the logs and you realize that, well, actually, even when the pod looks healthy, turns out that we never connected to the database. We were disconnected on along. We were just logging an error to the console, and that's that. I will argue that in this scenario, it would be better to fail fast and instead of allowing the pod to start upon trying to create your connection pool, whatever you use, you should just crash immediately when you realize that you cannot connect to the database. So it's all about failing faster so that you can detect errors earlier and do something about them. And some of you might argue that actually we could have handled these connection errors, instead of making the pod crash, we could have retried to connect to the server forever. But how about the URL was just fundamentally wrong? You could argue that you can create a data doc monitor that looks for that, you know, host unreachable error and triggers an alert. But I just feel this, this is all fundamentally more complex. It's just easier to make the thing crash. So I will say this is a design principle. When you get to an irrecoverable error, just crash. That's the cheapest thing you can do. That way you'll raise awareness that something is obviously bad and you'll take care of it faster. On top of this, instead of creating like a bunch of Datadog monitors for to pattern match on the error messages that you get, you can just put that rule that says, well, if my pods get restarted, just ping me, just you know, page me with, uh, so that I can take care of it. And just like anything else in life, just because we found a group of irrecoverable errors that we can handle by panicking, there are some errors that you want to hide from the customer. Say you are building a game in Rust and you get to a bad state where obviously, I don't know, you have your client side game written in like Baby or something that connects to a server and the server is down. Well, crashing is obviously not the best way to go about it. Instead, you should handle the error and show a very concise, clear, actionable error that the customer can see. And also you want to get a signal back to your server so that you can actually go and fix your damn game. And this is a principle for you guys. You won't find roles that apply in all cases. You should forget about that. This one trial, one size fits all. Every time you encounter this, you should do this. These kind of roles do not exist. You as a developer are in control. You are the architect and the master of your system. In general, I recommend that you save yourself a bunch of time and you know just read this book cover to cover. Chapter 9 goes over this particular topic, and I believe it's pretty well aligned with my opinion here. Just save yourself time, read the book, and I'm, I'm reading it as well, so you can read it uh, with me, you know? Cheers!